the Brazilian government. Let's bring in Antonio Sampao, who's research and analyst for uh, Latin America at the International Institute for Strategic Studies, for more on this story. Antonio, thanks for being with us. Is this just about making sure that a decision isn't taken which takes Lula da Silva out of facing justice? Well, the decision uh, by the Supreme Court will be will be taken um, uh, as a as a matter as a matter of technical uh, or technicalities or in the legality of the of the appointment of Lula as a minister, which coincided, of course, right after he was um, officially, you know, uh, involved and indicted in the car wash investigation for uh, dealings with an apartment that he bought. So it was a very, um, uh, to say the least, unfortunate timing that the president nominated nominated Lula uh, for a ministerial post. Uh, by nominating him to a ministerial post, um, she effectively gave him immunity because he would be liable only for uh, 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 a tribunal in the Supreme Court, uh, a judgment in the Supreme Court, which takes years and years. So effectively, she gave him immunity. And that's what's being judged uh, in the uh, Supreme Court now. This is beginning to smell like something that is horribly politically motivated. Is that fair? Well, uh, the Supreme Court uh, decision uh, will be the the final decision on that matter. So um, uh, the, the Supreme Court judges are themselves appointed by presidents. So we have at this moment at the Supreme Court judges that have been nominated by the opposition uh, and also judges that have been nominated by uh, the current governing party, the PT. So it is pretty much uh, a matter of, uh, of, of the, the opinions and the technical decisions decisions that are explained in their very long uh, reports that they write to justify their votes by each minister of the Supreme Court. What you're saying makes it sound like it's actually a lot fairer than many of the protagonists in this story are making out that it is. This all in all represents quite a fall from grace for Lula da Silva, doesn't it? Yes, uh, President Lula is, uh, as you said, a very popular figure still in the country. Uh, he is a symbol of the fight to overcome the kind of systemic poverty that was affecting Brazil. And um, the the government now is, is 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 portraying this as a sort of them against us struggle, um, which, um, as you pointed yourself. Uh, the facts themselves uh, indicate another picture, a more complex picture of Lula uh, leaving government with 80% approval rate, which shows that there was no kind of upper middle class conspi conspiracy against uh, against Lula. So he had uh, an overall uh, popularity in the country for the, the sort of economic stability he brought to the country and for the fight against the poor. However, the uh, revelations that were brought about by the car wash investigation have created a sort of disillusionment uh, with Lula and with the PT, the Workers' Party, uh, as being deeply involved in corruption, in high level corruption, a very organized and very uh, that has been running for a long time uh, with the state oil company and some of the major construction companies in Brazil. So this disillusionment with Lula, with his uh, time in government and with his successor, anointed successor, uh, Dilma Rousseff, is what is behind the, this popular drive uh, against the government. And let's not forget that uh, on the 13th of March, uh, the largest protest ever uh, in recent Brazilian history uh, took to the streets 3.5 million people um, to protest against corruption in the current government. So it is it is by no means a simple story, but uh, the PT has lost a great deal of its uh, popular support. Indeed, and all this in the run-up to the Olympics when Brazil should be celebrating everything that's great about the country. Antonio, thank you so very much for joining us. Antonio Sampao, who's a research analyst for Latin America at the International Institute for Strategic Studies. Antonio, thanks again.